This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Wendy Griffith. Democrats push ahead with impeachment, with Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying there's a constitutional duty to act, but the White House expects full exoneration in the Senate. Charlene Aaron is following the story and joins us now with the latest. Charlene. Wendy, President Trump is expected to address the impeachment charges put forth by the Democrats during the Senate trial phase. White House Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham said the president will address these false charges in the Senate and expects to be fully exonerated because he did nothing wrong. Democrats announced two articles of impeachment charging the president with abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. They say the charges stem from the president's pressure on Ukraine to announce investigations of his political rivals while he temporarily withheld aid to the country. Before the Democrats made their announcement, the president insisted he did nothing wrong, tweeting, the impeachment process is sheer political madness. The House Judiciary Committee is expected to publicly take up these articles for debate and approval as soon as Thursday, and there could be a full vote in the House next week. Republicans, Republicans blasted the Democrats on the issue, saying they have no evidence that the president did anything wrong. All the times that the Democrats brought witness after witness that were supposed to be the star witness, they were asked by our members, point blank, can you name an impeachable offense? Not one. Can you name any count of bribery? Not one. Yet they still go forward with impeachment, not because there's evidence, which is what the constitutional standard should be, but because they're afraid he will get reelected. And meanwhile, a Quinnipiac University poll found that 45 percent of registered voters think the president should be impeached and removed from office, compared to 48 percent who don't think so. Wendy? Interesting times we're living in. Thank yes. you, Charlene. Appreciate that. Well, failing marks for the FBI for the DOJ report, Attorney General Bill Barr calling the Mueller report an intrusive investigation of a U.S. president on the thinnest of suspicions. What precisely did the report find, and why are the findings a no-clear win for Democrats or Republicans? Eric Phillips explains. The report criticizes the FBI for inaccurate information on surveillance or so-called Pfizer warrant applications. The IG stopped short of saying the Mueller report never should have happened, but his boss willingly made that leap. In a statement, Attorney General Bill Barr said the FBI launched an intrusive investigation of a U.S. presidential campaign on the thinnest of suspicions that, in my view, were insufficient to justify the steps taken. It is also clear that from its inception, the evidence produced by the investigation was consistently exculpatory. The FBI filed so-called FISA warrants to be able to electronically monitor Trump campaign aide Carter Page. The warrants were renewed three times, but the report says the FBI personnel fell far short of the requirement in FBI policy that they ensure that all factual statements in a FISA application are scrupulously accurate. There are a number of things in this report uh, that, in my view, fall well short of the standard of conduct and performance that we and that I expect of all our employees. And we're going to be taking a number of corrective steps uh, to address that. The report says officials learned new information between the time the applications for warrant renewals were submitted, such as the fact that the DNC and Hillary Clinton's campaign helped fund the infamous Steele dossier, chiefly used to obtain the warrants. But that new info was not included in subsequent FISA application filings. This is a sad day. This is a dangerous set of circumstances. But there are better days ahead. Mr. Horowitz has identified the problem. Is it up? Is up to us to fix it. The report maintains that while decision makers higher up in the FBI were not kept properly informed during the investigation, quote, information that was known to the managers, supervisors, and senior officials should have resulted in questions being raised. But that didn't happen. The report also said there was no evidence of political bias where the investigation was concerned, and that while there were issues, by and large, there was probable cause for launching the investigation. Well, I think if you're looking at this through either a Democrat or Republican lens, which most people on Capitol Hill are doing, as well as the president, there's not a clear win for either side. 
The investigations in this matter are still not over. There's one more being conducted right now by U.S. Attorney John Durham. Durham released his own statement Monday saying he told the IG he does not agree with some of the report's findings, including how the FBI opened its case. Unlike the IG's report, Durham's investigation could result in criminal charges. In Washington, Eric Phillips, CBN News. Thanks, Eric. And be sure to catch up on the latest from the nation's capital this evening on Faith Nation. You can watch it right here on the CBN News Channel. Well, the FBI is still trying to determine if the Pensacola shooter acted alone or was part of a larger network. The aviation student from Saudi Arabia opened fire in a classroom at the Naval Air Station Pensacola on Friday morning, killing three people. The incident is being investigated as an act of terrorism. A U.S. official says the gunman had apparently gone on Twitter shortly before the shooting to blast U.S. support of Israel and accuse America of being anti-Muslim. Meanwhile, people in the community are coming together to do what they can for those affected. The base is a heartbeat of the community. Um, most of the people you meet when you're in Pensacola are in some way connected to that base, whether it's civilian or military. It's about the least I can do. I mean, there's not, there's not really much else I can do in my position except give blood and try to provide comfort. But this is about the families of those that you know, have, been, have been killed and wounded. Um, and we're just trying to do everything, can, everything we can to uh, stick together and uh, console each other. Meanwhile, the FBI says yesterday it has found no signs of any link between the shooting and a recent cyber attack on computer systems in Pensacola. Officials in the city became aware of the cyber attack early Saturday, just hours after Friday's shooting. The city says they're working to restore everything. We have disconnected much of our city network um, just to make sure we can get everything back up and running safely and make sure that we're not vulnerable to any other cyber attacks. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has left in place a Kentucky law requiring doctors to perform ultrasounds and show the images of the unborn babies to patients before abortions. The justices didn't comment after refusing to review an appeals court ruling that upheld the law. The American Civil Liberties Union had challenged the law on behalf of the only remaining abortion clinic in Kentucky. The law was passed in 2017. Well, bitter cold is expected across much of the country this week. The National Weather Service says the cold front will bring an Arctic air mass from the mid-Atlantic through the northeast. Meteorologists say the upper Midwest will see highs below zero today and tomorrow. Chill advisories have already been issued for a portion of the Dakotas and Minnesota is under a winter storm warning. Icy roads are already causing issues for residents. The toughest part is the sheet of ice out there, so you're trying to get traction, traction while you're pushing it up the hill. It's almost like that first snow of the year in Nebraska, and uh, everybody's struggling with it. Could probably use a little bit of salt. <laughs> salt always helps. Well, over a foot of snow is possible in some areas of the region and in the northern Great Lakes. Coming up, what one doctor has to say about screen time and kids. How he says it's impacting their brains. But before we go to break, here's a look at what's, what's trending on CBNNews.com. If you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. 
Children's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? A new study out of the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center reveals that young kids are getting too much screen time and it's having negative impacts. The American Academy of Pediatrics created guidelines for parents to reference. Their recommendations include avoid screen media completely for children under 18 months old, restrict use to one hour per day for children ages two to five, and place consistent limits on time spent and types of media used for children above six years old. The Cincinnati Children's Hospital studied 47 healthy children between the ages of three and five. The examination revealed that skills such as brain processing speed, brain processing speed were impacted. Well, Dr. John Hutton, the author of the latest study and director of the Reading and Literacy, Literacy Discovery Center at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, joins us now with more. Dr. Hutton, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Talk to us a little bit more about the negative impacts of too much screen time on children. I think the, the main issue really comes down to readiness. Um, one of the, the adages in pediatrics that we often use is that children are not small grown-ups. And really what they need at different ages changes with, you know, as they get older. And, and our study involved preschool age kids around age three to five. And at that age, they're really, really dependent on multisensorial experiences. They want to interact with people. They want to figure out how the world works. So a lot of the issues with screen time may not so much be that the screen time is directly harmful. I mean, there are certain aspects that might be, such as inappropriate content, other things like that. But it's mostly probably that it gets in the way of other experiences that are, are healthier for kids, like um, reading books and interacting with people and, and toys and things like that. All right, we're going to get back to that age group in a second. But why should infants under 18 months not be subject to screen time at all? Yeah, so infants are really, um, I mean, they're just figuring out how the world works. I mean, they really are incredibly... Um, responsive and dependent on, on nurturing. They want to feel loved and connected with people. Um, they're figuring out how their senses work. They're, they're really, they, they just aren't quite able, they're not quite ready to really understand what a screen is or, or, or that there's something behind all the flashing lights and, and everything. Like they will be attracted to the screen, but they generally don't get much out of it. There's, there's um, a lot of evidence that that young babies just don't learn much of anything from screens. So if you're a parent and you think you're helping your child by making your child perhaps smarter by putting a screen in front of him before, while he's still a baby, you're actually doing harm. Well, potentially. I mean, we don't want parents to feel guilty or feel like they're hurting their kids. One of the issues is, is that there's a lot of marketing of a lot of apps and videos and other things that are that are marketed to make kids smarter and they really make very unsubstantiated claims. Um, the term learning and education is used a lot and it's very powerful. Um, one of the things we want to get across is that the really the best teacher for a child is their parent or someone that cares about them and really you can't replace that with any kind of device or electronics. Well, one hour a day for children two to five, this might seem impossible for some parents who are already, well, their kids are already used to having that iPad or whatever, that video. So what is your advice to those parents to help them scale down? Yeah, it's really amazing. It's, I mean, thinking about how quickly the technology has exploded. Um, I mean, really, it's, it's, it's hard to believe that iPhones have only been around for about 10 years, and now we use them all the time. They're just basically a part of our day pretty much constantly. Um, so, so it really does seem like it's unreasonable for parents to limit their children to less than an hour. Um, I think that if a, 
a child is going to watch something or, or if the parent needs to make dinner or, or get some errands done or something and, and the child is watching television or something, that's okay for limited amounts of time as long as they're understanding that probably not an optimal learning situation. But then also at the same time, it's important to encourage grownups and kids to spend time together so they can watch a movie together. They can, you know, play games together or whatever and talk about what they're doing. And anything that will kind of increase the amount of communication between grownups and kids is going to be healthy, healthier than, than if the child's left by themselves. Yeah. I know when you're driving, sometimes you can see, you know, the, the kid in the back seat watching his video game. So perhaps he's he wouldn't He'd be screaming otherwise. Um, so you can certainly understand why parents do it. But what other activities can young, young children do other than watch videos um, that would be healthier and, and even more fun, perhaps? I think it really is incredibly important for young children to learn how to, how to use their imaginations and really to cope with being a little bit bored. You know, that riding in the backseat of the car, being able to stare out the window and daydream and reflect, let their, let their brain take a break. Um, you know, that's how it's really a very important skill for children. It's, it's a source of peace and, and just feeling um, and being able to calm themselves down um, and not be dependent on a device getting handed over to sort of um, distract them. Um, being able to, to, you know, get out a pad of paper and, and, and some crayons and draw pictures and look at books and just, just really to, to use their imaginations and their creativity um, instead of just handing over a device that's going to be a, a kind of a quick fix. Yeah, I think we adults could also benefit from this yes. as well, <laughs> getting away from our devices. Well, Dr. Hutton, thank you so much for this valuable information. We appreciate it. God bless. It's, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Coming up, you'll meet a very unusual type of doctor. They're actually amazing dogs who are helping people living with some serious medical problems. We'll tell you about Dr. Dogs when we come back. Daddy? Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public school. The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Well, they're called doctor dogs. They're sniffing out diseases, tracking down deadly superbugs, and helping people manage serious medical conditions. Lori Johnson shows us how these amazing animals are helping victims reclaim their lives. 23-year-old Danielle Brooks can now live on her own 
attend grad school, and even travel internationally, all thanks to her service dog, Rolo. He helps Danielle manage sleep disorders, including cataplexy, which can cause her to suddenly collapse. After laughing with friends in the driveway, I got a concussion, and that was kind of the final straw for me of accepting that I needed more help than just medication. Rolo tunes into Danielle so closely, he can actually sense an impending episode. So he'll tell me before that, or tell me that my heart rate's getting too high, so I need to rest and take a break and sit down. Before Rolo came on board, Danielle feared how narcolepsy, which suddenly causes her to fall asleep, prevented her from living independently. Oh, what if I fall asleep on the bus and miss my stop? Now, Rolo can wake Danielle up when she just nods off and if she sleeps through her alarm. He also picks things up for her and even opens the door, which helps save energy throughout the day. He also can, like, unload and load things into the washing machine if I really want to take a lot of time, but he hasn't figured out how to fold the clothes yet. Dogs perform important work in the world of medicine, and the number of jobs they do continues to grow. Turns out certain canines can handle just about anything. Nobody knows that better than Maria Goodavich. As a researcher, she documents cutting-edge examples in her book, Dr. Dogs, how our best friends are becoming our best medicine. Well, I love seeing the dog-human bond, but when dogs save lives, there's just nothing like it. Whitley here can warn Clay 20 minutes before his devices indicate low blood sugar that could possibly put Clay into a diabetic coma. When anxiety overcomes Kit, her dog Angus can calm her down and prevent an overwhelming situation. Hank helps Molly manage schizoaffective disorder by helping her determine whether the people she sees and hears are actually there. That just by him being a dog, a friendly dog who greets everybody, anybody, then he can help her separate reality from these horrible hallucinations just because Hank isn't saying hi. Dr. Dogs are trained using positive reinforcements. They're motivated to learn with toys, treats, and praise. These techniques allow dogs to learn brand new ways of communicating with humans, such as activating their talking vests. Please follow me. And 911 touchscreen technology. Sky, go get help. Excellent. And I think it's just going to lead to a whole new world, a whole new future for us. Believe it or not, dogs can actually smell sickness, like Sugar here, who's going around the wheel, sniffing out the T-shirt worn by a person with Parkinson's disease. This dog scours a hospital, locating the presence of deadly superbugs, such as C. diff, which no human or machine can readily detect. And in a Japanese community with a high rate of stomach cancer, doctor dogs are being used to detect it before it's too late. Their sense of smell is so much more sensitive than ours. We, we have about 6 million olfactory receptors. Dogs have 300 million. They can smell in parts per trillion, which is like a tablespoon of a substance in the equivalent of two Olympic-sized swimming pools. After seeing these examples, you may think you could benefit from your own Dr. Dog. There are a lot of great organizations out there, and they produce really good dogs. There are some organizations out there that are really well-meaning. They might produce good dogs. They may not. They try. And then there are some, there have been some, that are just out there to make a buck. So for people who could use some help managing a medical condition, doing a bit of homework can help find the perfect companion. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Thanks, Lori. And to hear more about the amazing ways dogs are helping people with medical issues, Maria, Danielle, and even Rolo, you can join Lori on this week's Healthy Living Show tonight at 9.30 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. Up next... How the First Lady is hoping to make a difference in kids' lives this Christmas season.
region's first ROTC grad student. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. First Lady Melania Trump teamed up with the U.S. Marine Corps to give back this holiday season. The First Lady handed out toys to children and bags bearing the slogan of her signature child welfare initiative, Be Best, as part of this year's Toys for Tots campaign. The annual tradition involves collecting and distributing toys to less fortunate American children and providing hope through the joy of Christmas. Mrs. Trump greeted visitors, made brief remarks, and sat with the children as they made Christmas cards. She also helped sort the toys that will be distributed throughout the holidays. Beautiful. Well, that's it for this edition of CBN News Watch. We hope you'll join us next time. From all of us here, have a great day, and God bless you.